Hi, I'm Cassie, and this is Josh, and this is our little boy Harley. And for the past five years, we've been living in Brisbane, Australia. And probably for most of that time, we've been craving something more. Craving the open road and the great outdoors. So after years of dreaming, we decided to buy a caravan and go and explore our own backyard. This is our story. Subscribe and tune in every week to see what we get up to. the places to eat that Launceston has to offer, we could be here for hours. <laughs> so instead, I've narrowed it down to a few little gems that are tried and tested for when you come to Launceston yourself and the hunger pangs hit. So first things first, where can you go for breakfast? Earthy Eats is your healthy community hub style breakfast. They have bone broth, turmeric lattes, locally sourced coffee. A drawback for me was they serve milk lab and I drink almond milk myself and I just cannot understand when you go to these beautiful, organically healthy minded places and then they're selling box almond milk full of numbers and fillers. So that's something that you have to deal with if you do drink almond milk and you come to Launceston. Um, it's quite hard to find good almond milk. <laughs> but honestly, could not fault Earthy Eats on the food. They were amazing and the staff were really friendly. It's only just a stone's throw away from the main part of the city, the Brisbane Street Mall area, and they offer really awesome breakfast options. They also have cabinet food, so you can stop in for lunch, and they close around 2.30 in the afternoon. So every Saturday from 8.30 till 12 p.m. you've got the Harvest Market. So they're more of your gourmet style market. So you've got your deli cheeses, your seafood, all of your artisanal kind of products. They do have some fruit and veg, um, but it's very limited. One of the highlights of Harvest Street Markets for me was the Wanderlust food van and they do incredible gluten-free pies. So only about 30 minutes drive from Launceston is the seaside town of Devonport where you'll find Hill Street Deli and they also have a grocer which is attached to IGA. Um, they do incredible coffee, incredible food. Josh will always go for a bagel and I'm always a gluten-free toasted sandwich. So they do turkey, ham, and it's really good quality meat. About 15 minutes outside of Launceston, very close to Launceston Airport, is the historic village of Evandale. It's so beautiful. They have a market on a Sunday, and I found it was one of the best places to get produce from. In Evandale, you'll find Ingleside Bakery, which my recommendation is their Reuben Toasty on the gluten-free rye bread. Oh my God, it's freaking incredible. So for lunch. <laughs> I found this gem of a place called Mad Apple. So it's this really indie Melbourne style vibe inside with like exposed brick and pendant lights, such good service, really friendly and really affordable menu. So um, on a Wednesday, they did a $17 snack and cocktail special, which I thought was incredible. And I think on a Friday, it was a snack and two cocktails for $30. Um, I had their gluten-free samosa um, on, on one occasion and their gluten-free tempura vegetables. Holy wow. So yeah, could not fault them um, at Mad Apple. For me, what stood out on the menu was they seemed to pride themselves on sourcing locally um, and they had a lot of gluten-free options almost everything on their menu was gluten-free and just naturally gluten-free you know they didn't set out to be gimmicky it was just really well done so on the banks of the Tamar you'll find Stillwater 7 which is a boutique hotel near the Penny Royal attached to Stillwater 7 is their restaurant Stillwater and the aesthetic of Stillwater and just their commitment to high quality was inspiring to say the least
person. Just had the oysters, drinking our wine, overlooking the water. This place just screams luxury. I've always wanted to visit this place since I saw it on Hunting for George. And oh my God, I definitely want to stay here one day. This place is incredible. I only stopped in for just a little wine and oysters, but their menu was so incredible, but definitely on the pricier side. So unfortunately, didn't have time to eat there this time around. But if you're ever in Launceston, I definitely recommend just having a long lunch, having some wines, starting with some small plates and working your way through the menu. It may cost you, but it's definitely going to be worth it. So just down the road from Stillwater is the Kingsbridge Hotel. And we went there on a Saturday afternoon and it just had the kind of local crowd having some afternoon drinks, getting ready before dinner service. And they had this seafood platter for two, which was only $35. And it was the best seafood platter I've ever had. It was incredible. We have eaten dinner there last time we were in Launceston, so that's why we decided to go back. And they have a really cool vibe. It's a really old pub, um, just that real cozy winter feel as well inside with like fire and blankets and the staff are really friendly as well. So another really cool day trip that we took from Launceston, which was a little bit more on the longer side as opposed to just heading to Devonport or Evendale, was out to Stanley. So we have a whole nother episode coming on this trip because we went with Josh's nan, so stay tuned for that. Um, but definitely recommend um, that it was about a two and a half hour drive from Launceston and we went to the Stanley Hotel Bistro. So oh my goodness, what a cool pub. Never ever have I experienced a pub that is all about sourcing local ingredients, farm to table cooking, nose to tail eating. You can tell they're really making the effort to support the local farmers and to really celebrate them as the unsung heroes of the food industry. That's where all of our food comes from. And when it's more industrial and more conventional, you can lose a lot of that flavor. And also that's how, I guess, those farms are able to cut costs where the little farmers are kind of left out and, and their livelihood really suffers. So I thought it was really cool on the menu. They had a big story about um, you know where their food comes from and it was really awesome to see. So for dinner. If you're just looking for something light, I definitely recommend Havilla, which is across the road from Prince's Square. And it's a cozy little wine bar with an eclectic menu and some small plates to share. So it's nothing too hefty. It's definitely somewhere to go on your way to dinner or if you're just wanting to, you know, try everything on the menu and just have dinner there. Uh, but their wine list and some of the wines that they had on the wall was next level. So if you love wine, Havilla Wine Bar is the place to be. I love wine bars. <laughs> What do you, what would you say? Marmalade, mandarin, lemon, curd. What's curd? Um, like a, a custard. It's like slightly sparkly. Yeah, it's got like a tang. What's it called? Gaia Moon, Shannon Muscat Semion from South Australia. So you've got the Holy Man Pinot Noir, and it was from Holy Man, is the winemaker from Stony Rise's last name. And apparently, this is their more upmarket Pinot Noir, and it's from. Havilla's off list, which is normally by the bottle, it's more yeah. fancy. Yeah, and um, if I'm gonna buy a nice wine, I'm gonna buy a Yeah, Tasma Tassie does good Pinot. One of our all time favourite places to go ever has been St. John's Craft Beer Bar. They have craft beers from all over Tasmania and then some. They do one of the best bar 
pub style menus that I have ever experienced. They tailor to gluten free and they also source locally and cherish farm to table kind of living. But they do it in a very humble way. So they're not setting out to do that. They've just inevitably done that. And holy wow, the chicken tenders that can be done gluten free were the best I've ever had. So definitely could not fault St. John's Craft Beer about the vibe. It's where you can go for, you know, just the after work beer or stay into the night. They open seven days a week until late and it's incredible. Hello and welcome to St. John Craft Beer Bar. Currently eating pork scratchings. They have an incredible menu here. So many different types of craft beer and wine from all over Tasmania. And uh, what am I drinking? The, oh, so I'm drinking the Stony Rise Pinot Noir, which is on, I think it was the East or West Tamar wine trail. So it's incredible. What are you drinking here? The blackest stout I could find. And these are the scratchings. Just like, how do they do that? Uh, deep fried pork skin. And then these chicken boys. tenders. Gluten, gluten free chicken tenders. So let's try them. Oh my god, they're hot too. Oh shit, they're so hot. <laughs> We're talking about um, not being lied to. Or, um, Okay, just trying to spruce up your product when it's a piece of shit. <laughs> so my belief is, and me and Josh always love to have these constructive discussions about whiskey, and I feel like the way sometimes Josh describes whiskey is very, um, can have a negative connotation attached to it when he's just trying to be honest. So it might be Let's something, hang on. the whiskey part and say, Everything. Okay, well, whatever it is, but whiskey, especially, it might be, oh, it has a mouldy taste or um, it's young and boring. Instead of, for example, this whiskey that we're drinking today, which is from Ferne Distillery on Flinders Island, and it is their, what was it called? Smoky Wedding? Smoky Wedding, yeah. <laughs> Tacos from St. John's Craft Beer Bar. What is it? Smoky Wedding? So for us, this smells like a smoky ham and pineapple pizza. It's got that very fresh fruit, pineapple kind of scent. Um, and then it's like meaty with the ham. And then it, it, what, it, what was the, oh, and then it smells like it's been cooked over a peated fire. So it's that smoky kind of pizza vibe. However, doesn't taste like it smells and Josh reckons in the whiskey world that's like an insult or a criticism whereas I think coming from a like promoting a brand perspective that you could market it in a different way and Josh thinks that's dancing around the truth so for me someone's worked really hard on this they've slaved away over it and I think it's a really good entry level into a smoky peated kind of whiskey <laughs> that was the best taco I've ever eaten. That was so What good. am I eating? Jackfruit? So what have you got? You've got um, brisket and fish. Well, I just had the... Um, Don't shout. I just had the brisket. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. you did. That was crunchy. Brisket's supposed to be soft. Oh, it might have had something crunchy in it. Oh, this is like a jalapeno in it. It's jackfruit and like jalapeno salsa. It's spicy. That was so good. <laughs> now, I mentioned Evandale earlier, and we were fortunate enough to have dinner at the Clarendon Arms. Now, they only open for dinner on a Saturday night, uh, but as is a theme with Tasmania, they really seem to cherish that sourcing food sustainably, farm to table produce and supporting local and I love it. <laughs>
But Clarendon Arms was one of the coolest pubs I've ever been to. Whoever has been in charge of designing the hotel is incredible. <laughs> they, they know what they're doing. You can have your liqueur hot chocolate by the fire, you can rug up with some blankets, you can have dinner in the many dining rooms. So they have big dining rooms for you know guests of over 10 people, they have small intimate spaces. It is one of the coolest places I've ever been to, so definitely check out the Clarendon Arms in Evandale. Now some honourable mentions for just places to kick back and chill and have a drink. <laughs> What are your first thoughts on Launceston? Love being back here. Love being back here. It's a great, great little place. So much to do. So many places to drink and eat. <laughs> Which is what we love doing. It's our favourite thing. We spend thing. all our money on drinking and eating. So <laughs> it's a place for us. Yeah. And dude. even like, it's a Monday night right now. and. The place we're about to go back to is open until 11 o'clock on a Monday night. Yeah. We're not used to that. We're not. One of the sickest whiskey bars we've ever been to was Kingsway. And the selection that they had there was, again, some of the best we've ever seen and the best we've ever tasted. <laughs> up this food video of our time in Launceston. I hope that you've taken away some helpful tips for when you visit yourself and please comment below if you've been to any of these places. What did you think? And we'll see you next time. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. See you later.